Welcome everyone to Vested Interest. This is Shane back again for their stock pick of the day video. It is January 30th, quickly wrapping up the first month of 2024 here. We're going to take a look at one out of the consumer discretionary sector, Whirlpool. They make appliances. You may have some of their appliances in your house and let's jump right in. And if you are new to the channel or just haven't done so, it would really help me out if you were to hit the thumbs up down below if you find any value in the content. Hit the subscribe button. Join us on this journey to financial freedom. Join the vested interest community and hit that notification bell down below so you're notified whenever we put out any new content. Drop a comment down below. Is Whirlpool in your portfolio? Is it one you're watching? Is it one you're avoiding altogether? Uh, let's take a look at this one and get right back to the video. This is the vested interest stock screen. This is how I set up the videos. It's also how I look at a company on a high level to see if I am interested in investing. And if I happen to have it in my portfolio, it is a good back check to see if the company still meets the criteria that I first set up for investing. We want to understand the business. So that's how we'll start out the video. We'll take a look at the business. We'll look at growing free cash flow, growing dividend over time. We're looking for a dividend payout ratio of 75% or less. Now this does not apply to companies like REITs who are required to pay 90% or more of their free cash flow by law and business development companies, BDCs typically pay more as well. Limited partnerships, uh, they do as well. So there are some companies out there or stocks uh, out there that do pay more than 75% that I don't really count. And that would be some of these. Check valuation based on dividend yield theory. We'll take a look at that. Buy below current cost basis. That's if it's already in my portfolio or within 15% of a 52 week low. I'll do a discounted cash flow analysis on a company I want to add to my portfolio and then I'll wait till it's within 15% of a 52 week low for me to start a position. Return on invested capital or return on equity. We're looking for 10% or better or in line with its industry average or greater and earnings per share growth. I like 5% or better or again in line with its industry average or greater and for financial companies like banks. I use price to book, one being fair value, anything under one undervalued, anything over one being overvalued. So back to Whirlpool, here we go, www.whirlpool.com. That is their homepage where I pulled this information from. And again, they are out of the consumer discretionary sector and Whirlpool, KitchenAid, Maytag, Amana. Those are the brands that all fall under Whirlpool. Built on a legacy of innovation, Whirlpool Corporation started in 1911 as a small company in Benton Harbor, Michigan. I'm from Michigan, so I really want to like this company. We'll see if that's going to hold true. Mm -hmm. For more than 100 years, its flagship brand has, uh, has driven innovations from introducing the very first automatic washing machine in 1948 to winning more than 20 CES Innovation Awards. I don't know what CES is, but obviously there are refrigerators, ranges, dishwashers, microwaves, wall ovens, cooktops, washers, dryers, the, any appliances for your home, that's what they're providing. Again, www.whirlpool.com, www.whirlpool.com. Check them out if you want to know more about this company. Now, the reason we are taking a look at them down 6.6% on the day, we are talking about Whirlpool Corporation, ticker WHR out of this consumer discretionary sector, close out the day at $110.01. 52-week range as low as $98.40, as high as $160.74. They are closer to their 52-week low than their 52-week high. Average volume, 971000 Today was four million. A lot of people getting out of this one. Market cap of $6.034 billion. Small cap company. Beta, not applicable. So it's going to be way more volatile than the overall market. That's what that's telling me. Price to earnings not available. So it's going to be in the negative. Earnings per share is negative. I mean, you're going to see a lot of bad numbers in this company. Uh, uh, we can you know, pretty much end the video now and I just tell you stay away from this one. But I want to go through it so you can see why you run through the found fundamentals of a company. I mean, if you just went by Whirlpool, should be a good co company because everyone's got a Whirlpool product in their house. That would be the wrong way to go. For dividend yield, $7. They do pay a very high dividend yield, the 5.94%, uh, but is that in jeopardy of being cut? X dividend date, November 16th. They paid out on December 15th. And look at that, 103.91% payout ratio. So they are way above 100% payout ratio. This does not meet the 75% or less than I'm looking for. Earnings per share was negative, $28.88, not good. And a one-year target estimate, at least according to Yahoo Finance, they see it continuing to go up $128.08 from here. I mean, that the numbers just look terrible. Let's look at dividend yield theory to do that. Statistics go down to dividends and splits. Five-year dividend yield average, 3.67%. 
Current dividend yield 5.94 over, over, over here forward 5.94 over 367. Since it is higher, that speaks to some potential undervaluation, but I would be hesitant on using that whenever it, the payout ratio is over 103.91%. So yes, it may be slightly undervalued, but is there a significant reason and should it be even more undervalued because they're taking on debt to pay out a dividend right now is what it looks like. Under financials, you're going to find a lot of good information, balance sheet, income statement, debt to equity ratio, ratios, assets over liability. Is there revenue growing? Are there margins expanding or uh, contracting? You want to be able to understand all that. For our purposes, we're going to look at free cash flow. 2020, 1 million in free cash flow, a little over 1 million 90,000 or 90 million. Uh, 1 billion, 90 million is what that would be. 2021, 1.6 billion. So a big increase in 2021. 2022, cut in half, basically. And 2023, so far, it looks like a big uh, drop. They haven't reported all their numbers for the year, but that looks like a big drop from 2022. So I would say overall, from 2020 to date, decreasing free cash flow, especially over the last uh, couple years from 2021, 2022 into 2023. They had been repurchasing their own shares, but it doesn't look like they're doing any of that in uh, 2023 here. And with this dividend yield, I would be 103% payout ratio, I would say they're in jeopardy of a dividend cut if they continue decreasing free cash flow over time. Now, I always recommend more than one source. Another one that I like is stockanalysis.com. You pick any sources that you like, just make sure you're picking more than one so that you can check the information you're getting is accurate and up to date. They have five analysts that have taken a look at this. They call it a hold. I would definitely say it's a hold, if not a sell. On this one, I owned this uh, was it the year, last year or the year before, and I did sell out of it because I thought the numbers looked bad then, and they have not gotten any better now. Low estimate of $92, that would be a 16.42% decrease from where it currently sits. Average one thirty, or I'm sorry, average of 134, not 113, 134, which would be a 22.09% increase, and pretty close to what we saw from Yahoo Finance on the previous page. Those they were still in the 128 range, so that's even higher than what they estimated. And if it happened to hit their high of 160, that would be a 45.35% increase. All the while, so long as they kept the dividend, you'd be getting almost a 6% dividend yield, 5.5 plus percent. Now, return on equity, I like 10% or better. They're in the negative, negative 0.38%, not good. Return on invested capital, they don't even list. I like 10% or better there, so they're not meeting that metric. EPS, growth forecast, I like 5% or better. Nothing listed, so I'm assuming that's in the negative. And revenue growth, they, they at least say revenue is going to grow 1.2%. Bad numbers overall. I just don't see any reason to get excited about uh, Whirlpool at all. They are quarterly dividend. They don't list the payout ratio that we saw in uh the previous slide from Yahoo Finance that uh, it was over 100%. That's probably why they don't want to raise it or list it here. Dividend growth, none. They've frozen their dividend at $1.75 back in 2022. Uh, they were growing it before that, but it's been frozen ever since uh, February 24, 2022. They do pay out on the March, June, September, December timeframe. They do pay out quarterly. That is really it for this one. Oops, apologies, Triven. I didn't take you out of there. This was for your suggestion yesterday for Gilead. Uh, this one's for Whirlpool, folks. This one, I would stay away from Whirlpool. I mean, someone in, go ahead and comment down below if you disagree, but I just don't see the numbers being very good on this one. I would maybe look, I, I don't even want to do any further analysis. I don't need to look at the revenue or uh, any other projections or how they're doing debt wise, any of that. I just, Based on what I saw there on a high level, I'm not interested in the company. This would go in the no pile and I would move on, but that's just me. Hey, let me know if you're a Whirlpool investor and how it's going for you. I'd love to hear from you. As always, appreciate you stopping by. And if you haven't done so already, don't forget to show me some love. Hit that thumbs up, ring the notification bell. Most importantly, hit that subscribe button down below. Join us on this journey to financial freedom. Join the vested interest community. Hopefully you are on your own journey as well. And I do personally read and respond to the comment section. So if you have a stock like Whirlpool you'd like me to do in the Stock Pick of the Day series, go ahead and drop it down below. And for those of you who have made suggestions recently, I do have those on my list. I'll get to them. Uh, be patient. Again, like Trivian here yesterday, yesterday with Gillian, I'll, I'll remove that Trivian now. Uh, appreciate the suggestion. But this is Shane signing off. Wishing peace and prosperity to you and yours. And remember, financial security comes to those who take a vested interest. Hey, thanks for stopping by. Hope you have a great week and we'll see you in the next one. I'm not a financial advisor. Nothing in this presentation should be considered financial advice. I'm only sharing my opinion in investor journey for educational and entertainment purposes. Investing involves risk and tangible money. You should never invest in any amount of comfort losing. Always do your own research. Invest based on your situation, circumstances, and select your material or seek the advice counsel of a certified financial advisor.